Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and since I've ordered this a few days ago I have been counting the days until it arrives. Why have I bought this one? I'm not too sure. Will I be able to fix it? Highly unlikely. As soon as I've seen the listing I just had to buy it. So when it arrived I could tell by the shape of the package what this was. Now let's have a look at it and then I'll read out the eBay list. And as soon as I've seen the eBay list, and I thought, it doesn't matter how much that this thing is going for, I have to win this auction. It is, look at it, here we go, here we go. Look at that, look, look, look. Come on, it's like a banana. It's like a banana, <laughs> look at that. Oh, I'm already in love with it, look. At that. So before we go any more further of this, I'm going to read out the listen to you because it just had me in hysterics. So here it is. It says Nintendo Switch console broken. Does not work. At least they're being honest. And I got it for an auction. So other people bidding on it. 12 people bidding on it. I got it for £36 plus £2.90. So I paid £38.90 for this. Just under £39. Which is probably one of the cheapest Nintendo Switch consoles out there. But not by much. Considering the state of it it was actually went for more money than i thought it would numerous pictures but i just love the description here it says nintendo switch console broken does not work condition is for parts and absolutely destroyed nintendo switch my son got angry with the game and snapped the console Maybe an odd internal part worth something to someone. And I like that because they're not saying maybe fixable. What they're basically saying is that they may be a part that works in here. And uh, I just love the honesty of the, uh, of the listing. Absolutely faulty, does not work, just in case you weren't sure from the pictures whether that was true or not. Now, what I want to know is, to begin with, the strength of the sun. I mean... I've never tried to bend a Nintendo Switch, but that must have been some rage going through his body when he did that. What I'd like to know is, what was the game that caused this? A console that cost nearly £300 to be destroyed so violently. I know I shouldn't be laughing. It's just that I really feel for the dad. Because, you know, having a son... Oh, I mean, I would go crazy if my son did this. <laughs> but, sir... Uh, Look at it! I mean, I really want to know what game it was that caused somebody to be so angry. I mean, could it be Fortnite? And then he thought he was going to get a victory royale and then lost at the very last. He came second and he was just... Rah! And uh, I just think that's brilliant. And I love the way it's bent more at the top because this is the bit that started to give and then you can see it folding down this way here. I think it's brilliant. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see... Obviously, I can't say I'm going to get this working. I mean, for me, it's going to be, what is there inside that I could use? So there's still going to be chips in here, I presume. Hopefully, the video chip might be okay. That other little uh, IC that goes, you know, when you have uh, when people brick their switch by putting in a non-standard power supply, maybe that will be okay. Who knows? I mean, there's a hell of a bend there. I wonder how bent the motherboard's going to be. Imagine if we could get something out of it, even if it was just to be able to be played in docked mode or something. So uh, let's have a look in here. Okay, no micro SD card in it. Should we power it up, see what happens? Is the battery going to be completely swollen up? Okay, there's nothing happening there. Let's, uh, let's plug in this here, see if it's trying to charge at all. So yeah, you, if you're thinking you're going to see a working Nintendo Switch, you probably won't want to watch this video, but I'm just really curious to see the inside of it. Oh, look. So that is, is that, that's taking a trickle charge, isn't it? That is taking a trickle charge, I think. But look, it's not trying to turn on. Normally that should then go to zero and then come up to about 140 or something. I'm trying to remember, I keep forgetting, I'm wondering whether it should be higher than that, whether it should be 0 0.4 something amps. Let's try and turn it on now when this is plugged in and see what happens. No, but look, it's doing something, isn't it? That's that's more than I thought it would do. Let's try plugging this in the other way, just in case some of the pins have come off from one side. No, same again. Interesting. Right, well, let's take it apart and let's see what we find. 
So part of me does wonder whether it would be able to be docked or not. At this moment in time, the answer is no, because as you can see when I turn it on, it doesn't, uh, it's not turning on, is it? But I wonder whether that could just be all battery related. Now I'm hoping that when I take this apart, I'm hoping now it's gonna be okay to work on. I hope the battery isn't gonna explode on me or anything. So there's quite a few screws missing. So in the moment of rage, obviously screws pinged across the room as well. It'd be interesting to see what parts from this would be reusable. So basically I bought another job lot of Nintendo Switches, but it's weird, I bought basically uh, parts from a, uh, it looks like it was from a repair company. So I think I've got like four motherboards, a few fans and stuff like that. So I might try to see if some of them can be pieced together to maybe get a working switch or something. But I had a, a quick look at the, the motherboards and stuff on them and there's been a lot of work on them. But maybe, you never know, by swapping over chips and stuff, I might be able to get something working. Okay, that's the remains of the Joy-Con rail there. But here, these rails might be okay. And the blue buttons. Oh, there you go, so it's a blue and a red one. So the Joplot one would obviously be uh, another video, but again, I, I don't really think I'm gonna have much hope on it. But still, it'd be definitely useful for spares. Is that gonna come out? Oh, there's one under here, isn't there? Right, so that can be reused. That's good. I know it sounds silly, but uh, every little thing helps. You know, all these things add up and cost money. I wanna see if this back cover is gonna be reusable or not. Right, so they're both snapped off there. That's snapped off there, but that's okay. That is snapped off there, but you know what? You could put a little, tiny little bit of plastic on that, glue a bit on there. You might be able to, yeah, that might be okay. You might be able to get away with using that on another one. Okay, so clawing back a bit of money already. Might be able to be reused, possibly. It doesn't look in there. Uh, it doesn't look too bent up. Little bent up there. That might work. Okay. Wow, that motherboard is wow. Really, yeah, that really has bananaed out. Right, let's disconnect the battery. Let's see if there's any voltage in this battery. It's nice just to have one that's not got water damage. So uh, already, even as it is now, I'm just really happy with it. So I'm on volts DC. Black to black, red to red, I'll just go on the outer two. 2.7 volts, okay, so the battery is discharged. Massively discharged. Why don't we, what should we do? Should we get a, uh, a working battery, put it in, and then see what it does? Well look, the screen's completely smashed up anyway, so you're not gonna see anything there. Let's, let's take it apart further. Let's get the motherboard out and see how bent it is. The problem is, by straightening it, I may end up damaging it more. You know, if it's been bent now, in theory, it might still work, but then by me straightening it out, it might then, it might then snap, I don't know. The battery doesn't look to be, the battery looks to be pretty straight. I wonder if the battery could be reused. Because you know, if I could reuse the battery, this, this, and this, pretty much probably made, uh, near enough made the money back. Oh, it's got a nice bend on it there. Okay, so the fan, not surprisingly, doesn't <laughs> doesn't spin anymore. <laughs> Power cord here might be okay. I reckon that will probably be all right.
Right, okay, so here's the first uh, big problem. So if you have a look, this here is the card reader, but it's also the touch screen as well. And not only is the actual module bit here faulty there, but actually look at the connections there. They're gone as well. Possibly might be able to bend them back into place. I'm not sure, I'd have to look under the microscope to see if they can be bent back or not. Not sure. Saying that, we should still be able to get it turn to turn on without that in place anyway. So you could still have it as a, a docked switch and just have digital games. That looks nice and straight. So you might be able to get that part working again by just bending those pins back a little bit. Speakers should be fine. And also these rails at the side should be okay as well because the ribbon cables look intact. So you can see for spares now, and this isn't even including any chips yet, this is just parts that are easy to swap over. And the ribbon cable over this side looks okay as well. So hopefully those rails there would be able to be reused, which is great. We've got a Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth antenna again. One of them goes up to uh, here. That should be, not sure, it looks like it's very bent here, but yeah, I'm sure that wire will be all right as well. Yep. Right, so the circuit board's broken up here, just where it meets this little screw, just that top corner. But I'm thinking that that should be fine. I'm thinking that there's gonna be no uh, tracks or anything in there. See, this is a multi-layer board, so it has numerous different layers inside it. But do you know what? I might zoom in on that bit, because I've never actually taken notice of the different layers. I might be able to see them on here. Right, so that's the edge there, so. I think you can clearly see the layers there, can't you? One, one, two, three. Yeah, so we've got to make sure that those layers are not shortened against each other. Or would they just be the, the ground for each layer, I wonder? Maybe it doesn't make a difference. Right now that I'm sort of scraping the cop away, it's harder to see now, but it definitely looked like there was... Let's go up a little bit. One, two, three, four. Definitely looks like there's at least four layers there, doesn't it? So I don't know how the different layers work, I presume. Uh, does each layer have a ground? That that kind of covers a lot of it. Or the middle layers, are they just traces? You know, tracks going from one component or one via to another? Don't know. I think this is ready to come out now. Let's just undo the backlight. There we go. Wow, okay, I've never, never, never seen a board like that. But you know the good thing? The good thing is it is like a gradual, it's not like a sudden snap, it is a gradual curve, like a kind of a nice little mini ramp. It looks to be a tiny bit of a crease here though. That bit there does look to have a bit of a kink in it. I wonder if there's any way that this would work again. I suppose realistically thinking about it now, these chips would be okay, but you know the main chips in the middle, the BGA ones, especially the main one, if the bend is there, which it is, I mean, look, you can see that it's bent in that orientation and in that one. Well, thinking about it, unless that chip in there was dead flat, some of those balls are gonna have to have lifted. They're gonna have to have lifted. Let's see what's happening under here. No, I mean, it looks, uh, it looks, that looks okay. 
you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a known working battery, plug it in, and then see what happens with this. See if it shows any sign of life or not. Right, so I've got a remains of another switch here. This battery is showing. Three point three. Okay, so that should be uh, that should be okay. What battery is this? Three. Oh, three point seven. It's still low though, isn't it? Okay. Well, let's plug it in and see if it does anything different than the other one. Okay, it's gone higher, that's more like a trickle charge now. Let's see if it goes to zero. No, so it's not turning on. But that does appear to be, I would say that that is charging that battery right now. Let's try it the other way around. What should happen is it should, like I said, it should go to zero and then it should go all the way up to like 1.4, I think. 1.4 amps and that means it's turned on so right now this switch is not turning on. I wonder could it be because the battery's so low? Let me see if I've got any other batteries. 3.7, right that's going to be better. No again it's just charging, it's not, uh, it's not actually turning on. Swap it around the other way. Oh, do you know, I didn't look at the other side, did I? Hold on, I didn't look at the other side. Look at this chip here. This one is off, look. Ah, it's game over. Let's zoom right in, I can see. I wonder, has that destroyed the pads or is it just a balls? I think this is a BGA one, so I'm not gonna be able to. Uh, it's a BGA one, so I'm not gonna be able to resolder that one on anyway, not properly. Right, so look. I didn't think to look at the back of it. <laughs> right, so that is it there. It's hanging on by just probably one of the traces up there, so I don't want to yank it. Yeah, you can see it's hanging on there. So there's a good chance then some of those pads are going to be ripped off, which is a shame. Do you know what? I'm not 100% sure what that chip is for. I might Google it, but either way, if the switch is doing like a self-test, to you know, let's say if it was a Wi-Fi chip or something, if the switch is doing a self-test and it doesn't see it, it's not going to allow itself to turn on. Right. Okay. That's a shame. Well, let's uh, let's just do a quick test on my meter. I'm just going to go around some of the capacitors just to see if we've got any shorts. I think they appear to be okay. Some of the ones here are shorting, but only after they've been on it for a certain amount of time. And I'm not sure, I think that might be normal because that's the one under the main, the main APU, the main chip. Well, amazingly, amazingly that the, chips they're not uh, most of them look to me as if they're not shorting so hopefully I will be able to reuse this chip here this chip here and this chip here because they're relatively easy to uh, swap around I'm so disappointed that it's this chip here because you can see all the balls underneath it if it was this video chip here I'd have a chance of replacing it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some bit of flux put it under there I'm going to remove this one now and let's just have a look at the pads underneath to see if there's anything we can do the thing is if there was just maybe like 10 balls or something I might be able to give it a go but because there's so many of them without me reballing it properly which I haven't got the proper equipment to do what's the odds of me adding solder to that and making it making it work pretty slim right so I'm just going to squirt some flux underneath it and that's Add some hot air. 
Right, I'm just 400 degrees Celsius and I've got it set to four out of eight. It should come off relatively easy because I can get the heat right under the chip already. There we go. Right, let's give it a good clean up with some IPA and let's see what we're left with. I'm really disappointed to say that I won't be able to take it any further. All of the pads themselves have been lifted. Let me zoom right in. All right, so if you have a look here, this was the chip and can you see it looks different than normal. The balls don't look shiny. They look a kind of like a, a reddish color. That's because what you're seeing there is the bottom of the track. So the balls are underneath here and then the actual tracks themselves, the pads, have, uh, have completely lifted off. So if you have a look really closely at this one here, can you see if I put it here, it's shiny. It might break off now. Okay, let me angle it instead. See it's shiny there? It goes down the trace down here. And if you look at the underside of it, it's red. So uh, yeah, that's what you're looking at. Every one of these have been lifted and you can see some of the remains of the traces there so unfortunately oh, I'm really disappointed because I was sort of thinking in my mind that uh, you know maybe I don't know in my mind I was thinking that maybe this chip here might have come off in which case then I'll be able to uh, be, do something about it if this chip over here had the bend through it then again I'd be able to solder through it but I didn't actually think that there might be something that would be ripped off completely Oh, I was expecting to try to do a bit of a repair on this, but you know what? There's no point in me taking it any further because, although you might be like, well, why don't you run wires, Vince? To begin with, there's loads of wires. And yes, I could run a wire from here to here. That would be okay. Bearing in mind that I still can't see the soldering. Remember, I, I'm it's a BGA, ball grid array, so all these are hidden underneath the chip. But still, if this one here was faulty or this one here was faulty, you could run a wire. But look, where, do, where does that go to? Where does this go to? Where does this go to? They're not all going to be ground. Some of them are going to be going to other ports, parts on the board through the multi-layer. I don't know if this chip here is married to this board or can you swap it with any chip. I don't even know what this chip is. So I've taken the numbers from the bottom here. You see that B1822. And I've had a look on the iFixit website. And basically, they've got it down as B1633, but it's the same thing, it's in the same location. But I can't find anything. Because it's got a HAC on it, one forum said that it must be a specialised chip for the Nintendo Switch, because I believe the models are called HAC something or other. Pretty sure they were, anyway. HAC, sorry, yeah, if you look at the, the boards here, can you see they're called HAC? So it could be coincidence, but the very fact it says HAC there, maybe it's made just for Nintendo Switch. It might not be like an off-the-shelf part. Uh, somebody else said something about, uh, some, in one of the forums, somebody said that the touch isn't working on their Nintendo Switch. They suspect it's this chip, but unfortunately nobody got back to them to say yes it is or no it isn't. Uh, on something else, it was down as a GC. ASIC, again, I don't know what that means, but I looked up GC ASIC, it didn't come up or anything. I looked up ASIC and it means application specific integrated circuit. So I don't actually know what that chip is for. Again, if you know what it's for, put it down in the comments below. I just thought purely out of curiosity, let's connect up the screen, the power button and the backlight, just in case we were to get a little charging symbol in the corner and we're not getting absolutely anything. So 100% the, the switch, there's charge going into the battery, it's showing as 3.7999, so 3.8, it's a 3.7 battery, isn't it? So I suppose the battery is being charged right now, uh, but there's actually nothing happening as far as the turning on of the Nintendo Switch, whether I tap the power button or hold it down. I can't get any display at all. And it kind of makes sense because I believe it does like a, a self-test to see what it can see. And then if it doesn't see a part of, uh, if it doesn't see one of the chips, then I don't think it goes any further and doesn't turn on. Okay, so curiosity has gotten the best of me. And what I've done is I put a load of flux on that area there. And then I put a load of solder on my iron just to see, because I can see tiny little silver dots deep down in there. And I was hoping that the solder would stick to it. But look, 
if I zoom in on the camera here, it's not sticking whatsoever. Now it looks a little bit dark because I've been, uh, that's just burnt flux, but if you watch this middle bit now, look how much solder I've got on the iron, loads, yeah? And I've been rubbing it around, rubbing it around, I've tried putting fresh solder on, uh, plenty of flux there, and I've even tried to kind of like poke it into the holes. I can feel each of the holes as I'm going over them, but unfortunately, the solder's just not sticking there whatsoever. It's sticking on the outer ones, I've got some solder, I, I can feel the outer pads, I can actually feel they're rough compared to all the others. So, uh, yeah, 100% this wouldn't be able to be fixed. The only way would be if you knew where each of those pads go to, then I suppose you could run jumper wires to every single one, but there's actually quite a few pins on the bottom of that chip. You know, that will take a, a long, long time. It's, you know, deceiving how many pins, I haven't counted how many pins. Let me quickly count them. So there's eight one way, six the other way, so that's 48 pins there in total. So that will take a long time to run jumper wires. And secondly, I don't know where the jumper wires go to. You know, there's going to be no schematics for this. So unfortunately, 100% this is not fixable. And I think even if you were a professional with a load of good equipment, I still don't believe it would be fixable. If you know there's a way to get solder into those pads there, because I can see just dots of silver, let me know. Let me just clean it up to show you those little dots. So there you can see it's all cleaned up now. And look, when you look deep down, it looks like you would be able to get solder to stick to these little contacts in here. Yeah, but I can't, uh, I can't get the solder to stick. What I actually did is on uh, this one here and this one here, I actually scraped them back to kind of try to expose more. So look at this one here. Yeah, so if I scrape it back, it looks like then you would be able to solder to that, but even these two here, I didn't. Oh, well, I mean, a tiny bit more got uh, stuck on, but not enough to make a nice big ball. So you can see, 100% it is definitely unrepairable. Right, let me just show you what I think is going to be able to be used again. Right, so we have things like the back case that you could use. It wouldn't be ideal, but it would be okay for certain, uh, you know, for a sort of done-in switch. Good news is the battery itself, look, I've been charging this up for a while now, and it is holding its own at 3.7 volts. So I'm pretty sure that this battery is gonna be okay once it gets taken out of here. So check this out. There you go, 3.689. So I think I, I had that on for about, uh, probably about an hour and a half or so. So I think with a little bit more that that would be, uh, I think that would be absolutely fine. What else do I think is gonna be okay? 100% Joy-Con rails at the side are gonna be okay because the ribbon cables look all right. I think the fan has probably had it. I could use the motor, but the casings had it. The uh, card reader here possibly could be fixed. Again, looking under the microscope, if I just push those pins back, I've got a feeling that that will be repairable. SD card, good chance that that is gonna work all right. And uh, things like the power ribbon cable and stuff, that's gonna be okay as well. Possibly reuse the metal chassis. You've got to think to yourself though, what's the point? When are these ever gonna fail on other switches? It's highly unlikely. But the main thing is, obviously that as well, the main thing is the chips. I reckon that this chip is gonna be okay, the video chip. I think this little chip down here and this chip will be okay. And as well as that, I've got numerous other capacitors and stuff. So I believe that it's just snapped, that chip has snapped off, but I think everything else is probably okay. So this is gonna be an ideal board now to use for spares. So for me, it was worth every penny of 40 pounds. If I was doing it again, even though I know now that that chip is unrepairable, I would still buy it again. Yes, it doesn't make for as an interesting video. I would have preferred if that chip was on there and maybe if I was to change over one of these chips or the video chip to get something out of it. I was kind of hoping that I might be able to get a docked switch or something out of it, but that's not the case. But I've still had fun doing it and it is still worth it when you consider that each of these chips cost around 10 pound. It doesn't take much to get to that 40 pound total. So there you go, that is what it is like inside a rage quit Nintendo Switch. I liked it, hopefully you got some enjoyment from it. Apologies that I couldn't get it to work, but I don't think anybody could get this particular one to work. But it was still interesting seeing what anger can do to a poor little Nintendo Switch. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care, bye now.